to do record. Okay. I think everyone can see me okay? Yep. All right, excellent. So we are recording. Let's go ahead and get through our mobility class today. Checking my frame just to make sure you can all see me for what we're gonna do today. Today's tools. You will need a lacrosse ball and a belt. And give you just one second, I'm gonna adjust something on the camera. There we go. Okay. Let's do this here. Okay. So we are recording. For those of you that watch this later on, fantastic. We're going to start out with two minutes. And so for those of you that are watching the recording, you can go ahead and at this point, you can fast forward two minutes, um, unless you'd like to keep count with me. What we're going to do is start with uh, diaphragmatic breathing. You can do this um, standing up, um, preferably standing up. I'm sitting down just because of my camera angle and most of the class will be spent down here anyways. Um, this is best doing standing up. So I'm going to be on my knees just to demonstrate initially, but essentially what we're going to focus on is belly breathing and contracting and tensing the core as we exhale. We're going to hold this in five second intervals, so it's going to be a very conscious effort as to what we're doing with our breath. So we're controlling when we inhale, we're controlling when we decide to not breathe, um, holding the breath, and then we're controlling when we actually exhale. So we're making every, um, every breath. Uh, a conscious a conscious movement essentially we're controlling it so as i inhale i'll count five counts we're going to do this two minutes it's going to be a big long inhale through your nose you're going to breathe into your belly so you're going to relax your core expand the belly out breathe into your rib cage we're going to hold that breath for five more seconds and then we're going to exhale and you can exhale however you'd like through your nose through your mouth or through both but as I exhale, I'm essentially going to pretend like I'm about to catch a punch at the end of that five seconds. So in five seconds, I have five seconds to really tense my core, brace my mid thoracic spine uh, for that impact. I'm going to hold for five seconds and then we're going to inhale. So inhale, hold, and exhale all will be five seconds long and then we'll go from there. Um, and this will help us kind of just tune our mind into our core to be super important. Um, the last few classes we've been really emphasizing um, our mid uh, our mid thoracic spine movement, uh, specifically bracing our lumbar spine by engaging our glutes, bracing our, our uh, upper C spine by engaging uh, our neck, and working a lot through the mid spine, which is super important for general mobility for everything that we do, whether we're sitting, punching, moving, um, whatever that might be. So let's start two minutes. Find a nice comfortable space to uh, sit down. You can also do this laying down, by the way, just not sitting. When we're sitting down, we have a tendency to uh, let our pelvis duck underneath us and our spine to collapse, and then we kind of end up crunching everything that allows us to breathe openly. So to combat that, we're gonna stand up on our feet, or you can actually do this lying down. Either way, just don't sit down um, and, and, uh, and collapse at once. Um, but I'm gonna stay sitting here. Um, I'm not gonna do this with you because I'm gonna keep count um, with you guys. So two minutes, starting in five seconds, um, you're gonna just start out with an inhale. So wherever you might be, and you, we're not gonna think up um, exactly, so just do your best. Um, count on your own, you can fast forward two minutes um, if you wanna count on your own, um, or you can keep count with me. Um, but in five seconds, get ready. Gonna inhale in three, two, and then take a big inhale. Five seconds of inhaling breaths. So big open breath, take it nice and slow. Try to fill that five seconds and hold. And exhale five seconds. Four, three, two, and hold. Three, two, one, and exhale. Three, two, one, hold. Big inhale, four, three, two, one, hold. Exhale, four, three, two, one, hold. Three, two, 
One big inhale. And hold. And exhale. And hold. Three, two, inhale, five seconds. We're through our first minute. And hold. And five second exhale. Four, three, two, one, and hold. And big inhale through the belly. Breathe into your rib cage. Hold five seconds. Three, two, one. Big exhale. Three, two. Catch the punch. Hold. And big inhale. Last 10 seconds. And hold. And last big exhale, tense, catch that punch, and tense the core. So that's going to be the way essentially we're going to brace the spine. Um, oh, hey, Tifana. I can't actually see you, um, but now I can. Cool. Okay, so got that breathing down. Something generally we can always start anything with. You do that throughout the day. Good stuff. Um, okay, so T spine flexion rotation. You can do this kneeling. You can do the standing. Um, it's up to you. What we're going to be doing is working on side flexion and rotation just to open up and start priming our um, our mid thoracic spine for movement. Work through our bracing position. We've got, um, and then we'll just go through our class from here. Um, so T spine flexion rotation. We're essentially going to do this th um, six times on each side. Three times going forward, three times would be backwards. Each time is going to include flexion and rotation. So um, again, I'm on my knees. You can do this standing. In fact, I would recommend doing it standing um, simply so that we can start to uh, center our weight over our hips and neutralize our pelvis. So I know you probably can't see my upper half of my body right now. So I'll start from the top and I'll move my way down. So at the top, I'm in a nice neutral position. I'm going to take my chin, and um, if you are at the keyboard a lot, uh, if you work throughout the day on your desk or you're on your couch because you have the freedom to do so, um, on the couch we tend to be a little bit rotated forward. Um, our shoulders are, are rotated inward because of being on the couch or just being in a position where you have to reach in weird places. So I'm going to pay special attention to my shoulders, bringing them back. I'm not necessarily flexing my chest. And standing up straight. That's not necessarily what I mean by what we mean by straight. But my shoulders are up and back. My chin is in a neutral position. If you feel like you have a tendency to pronate forward, and this might be something that you just tape yourself or video yourself from the side just to kind of see what your general posture is. But if you have a tendency to have your chin forward, we'll make it a point to really take our chin back. And I like to think about if I was in a fighting position and I was maybe sparring or boxing. That, uh, that slight movement of moving my chin back, just, just enough to get out of the way of a punch, that flex from right there, that flex on the neck is going to help us stabilize our, uh, our cervical spine, our neck. So from the top, I'll have a little bit of a flex here. Just put my head in a neutral position. My shoulders are up and back. My rib cage is down. I'm going to think about taking my butt and, set, and, and doing the opposite of flicking it out. I'm going to think about taking my butt and just tucking it in just a little bit. And this engages my pelvis and puts it in a neutral position. And from here, by thinking about tucking my butt in, it's a little bit easier also to, um, to clench my butt or to flex my, uh, my glutes, um, which is what I want to stabilize my lumbar spine. So from the top down to our lumbar spine, we're good. Now from our feet down, my feet, I'm going to have them just about outside, um, outside hip width apart. Um, and very soft, soft knees. So general, basic neutral position here. All of that's super important because from here is where we're going to start our flexion and rotation. So from that neutral brace position, my rib cage is down. I'm going to flex off to one side. You choose where you start. So I'm going to flex to my right. I flex down to my right. And now I'm going to rotate towards uh, or towards the front of my body. So I'm going to take my shoulder and I'm going to rotate. Now that I'm in a different position, I'm going to flex again. 
I'm gonna rotate again. One more rep, I'm gonna flex just a little bit more and rotate just a little bit more. Each of those movements becomes smaller and smaller and finally the smallest. I've done that on the left side, I'll do that on my right side, I'll do that on my left side now. So same thing, nice neutral position. I will flex over as far as I can go and then I will rotate to square myself up as far as I can go. I'll flex again and I'll rotate forward again. And then one more time, flex again, as much rotation as I can. At this point, I'm really pulling it across my entire body. That should be a lot of tension there. Come out of it nice and easy. We'll go back to our right or back to the opposite side that you started with. And then from here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flex and then I'm going to rotate away now. So flexing laterally and then rotating away. Same thing. I'm flexing laterally, rotating away, creating more tension and rotation. Flexing again, rotating away. And at this point, my rear glute should be turned on, it should be flexed to provide that stability for our mid spine. So as I start to work flexion and rotation, I'm going to have to keep my glutes engaged to stabilize my low, my low back to prevent those pinching or the, the, the lower back pain, um, which we usually get if we're laying on the ground or laying on our bed with our phone here. Uh, essentially our lumbar spine gets really compressed. So this is a way for us to kind of take a deload off of that, become very aware of where our pelvis sits and how it integrates with our spine um, and get a spine from more movement. So I'm assuming that we've done that. You've done six reps on each side. It doesn't take too long to kind of get your body um, primed for that movement. Next thing we're gonna be doing is the pike to squat rotation. So since we're on our feet probably already, we're gonna start from here. So again, our feet are gonna be in neutral position. Uh, and when I, when I say neutral, I mean my feet are going to be just outside hip width apart and they're going to be relatively straight as opposed to pointed outwards. So feet relatively straight, feet outside uh, hip width apart. And from here, we're going to work pike to squat and it's going to just warm up the hamstring and get us moving a little bit. When I say pike, that's essentially a hinge position. So with my feet in neutral position, I take my, my hip crease and that's where I bend. And so while most of us like to think about sending the butt back first, what that might tend to do, and I can't see all of you, it's a kind of, thanks for coming, I can't see you either on the screen right now. Um, and of course, when we're doing this online, we can't really see each other. But when I think about sending my butt back first, what I'm really thinking about is sending my whole hamstring back first. If I think about my butt back, I can accomplish that by just sending my butt back, which you'll start to notice, a nice big curve in my lower lumbar spine. My glutes aren't fired on, and this is going to take a beating. It's being compressed. So I think instead of my butt, I'm going to take my uh, the entire length of my hamstrings and press that backwards. And that keeps me engaged. That keeps my back straight. And it makes me think about if I'm pushing my entire hamstring back, I'm keeping this all parallel and not just trying to reach with my butt, which can I, I can compensate my lower spine. So. Pike position is a hinge directly at the hips. Send all of your hamstrings back. And I'm gonna go as far as I can go by keeping my back straight. I can reach the ground, but to reach the ground for me, I have to round the spine here. And I don't wanna do that for here, uh, for this particular exercise of warming up. So I'm gonna do a pike or a hinge. And this is essentially a good morning. If um, you're working a good morning exercise, but essentially I'm hinging forward and I'm gonna come back up. So start to work through this move. We're gonna to add to this in just a few moments. So work with me here while you're in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you're at. We're gonna be just working that hinge movement. And again, each time I'm doing this, I'm feeling pushing my hamstrings back towards the wall behind me. Hamstrings are going back and my back stays nice and flat. Look is neutral. So as I move, try not to do this um, and watch TV because I don't want to do things like this and create a big crease in my, in my C-spine here. So nice and neutral position. At this point, we're going to transition into some more movement. So now as I hinge or I pike forward, I'm going to go from my, um, I'm going to call this the bottom of my pike position, and then I'm going to sit into a squat as far as I can go safely without rounding my back, so without doing things like this or without the, the butt wing, where I get so low, but I end up doing something like this, and my spine curves at the bottom. 
So I'm going to go from my hinge position to as deep of a squat as I can go, and then send my hamstrings back first to that hinge position, and then sit my butt down into a squat again. So I'm never actually going to go back up to standing at this point. Now I'm going to stay down low, pike position, and squat. Send the hamstrings back, and then back to squatting. And we'll work this movement for 30 more seconds on your own time. Let's go ahead, going, just exploring that, that range of motion. And again, I'm never just going to the full stand. I'm working through my pike and my squat. You have about 15 more seconds. And when I do this, again, my feet stay relatively straight, even when I'm going into my squat position. So I'm gonna try not to cheat the movement of my hips and turn my feet out. This can be really easy, but I can't really engage my hamstrings and my feet turned out. So I'm gonna keep my feet straight, pike position, sit into the squat. Okay, so we'll move on from there. Um, what you might notice, especially with this particularly, um, keeping the feet straight and narrow as opposed to pointing them out, this requires a bit more hip mobility. Um, and ankle uh, flexion, the deeper that we go. It's much easier for us to get really low by turning the feet out. This is essentially a, um, a cheat. Um, essentially, um, if I don't have the hip or ankle mobility to get really low where squat a movement might, might require me to go, um, if I can't do this, an easy fix is turning the feet out. Um, for the purposes of our mobility class, I'm going to ask us to really try and focus on keeping the feet straight and narrow. Um, oh no. Either way, I think we're in the right stream. Uh, but keeping my feet straight and narrow because this will force me that even if I get less range in, in mobility class, um, it doesn't matter today because we're not doing this for workout or for uh, or with weight. So this allows me to focus on hip mobility, external rotation, as well as ankle mobility, because the deeper that I go, the more mobility my ankles are going to need to be able to get in this position here. So anytime we do something like that, I'm gonna be really focusing on the foot placement, specifically because it affects everything else going back up. Um, cool, so pike rotation, um, we're gonna skip that. We've done pike to squat already. Um, so now let's go back to, if you were in the last class, if you watched the recording, we're going to start with our casual sit-through flow. So for this, we're going to essentially, the way that I would get into this is sit on your butt, put your feet out in front, bring one foot in, and bring the other foot behind the ankle of your base. So like this. So I'm in essentially in a casual sitting position. So my casual sitting position means that I'm kind of slack here, leaning into the shoulder. I'm going to fix this for mobility class today. I'm going to push into the base of my hand. My whole hand is going to flatten to the ground. So not just the fingertips, the entire hand is going to spread out. It's going to start to stretch all the big muscles in our hands. It's going to start to stretch the muscles in our forearms and through our elbows and through our shoulders. The things that we do when we clench or are typing all the time or working on computers and stuff. I'm going to spread my entire hand out. I'm going to screw my arm in by essentially rotating the tip of my elbow as far as it can go, creating some tension here. So I first plant into the ground to give myself some support. I'm going to rotate my elbow pit as far forward as I can, and then I'm going to push into the shoulder. So no slack joints from my palm all the way to my shoulder girdle here. Nice and strong. My foot, I'm going to think not necessarily just sitting down and opening up the hip, but I also want to think, if I were to stand up, what would it take for this foot to power me off the ground, to be able to actually jump? That tension that I have to create is what I want to maintain while I do my, my sit-through flow. So this is essentially like um, in Krav Maga or fighting, maybe a transition kick, or in the middle of getting up where I have to put my foot behind me, but I have to clear the space of my hip. All of that is taking place with a strong base through my hand and my foot, and then being connected. Us being balanced is being able to put our foot back behind us without completely rolling forward 
and falling on our face. All of that's controlled for our mid thoracic spine. What we're going to do is just pull all of that down um, and just become really in tune with it. So I'm going to take my hand and plant it firmly into the ground. I'm going to screw my arm in. This is nice and strong. I'm going to push my weight evenly into my entire foot. So I'm not leaning forward or backwards on the heel of the ball of my foot. My entire foot is pressed in into the ground as if I was about to stand up. So my foot's pressed in, my ankle's in a nice neutral position, and my knee, I'm also going to start to drive outwards just to fill up the slack in my hip. So at this point, I should feel nice and strong. This is essentially right in the middle of what would be a Krav Maga get up or maybe a kick or a transition from the ground. However, the transition for us today is simply going to be a rotation. Now I'm doing the same thing on the other side. As I move, I keep my knees super low. So my hips don't rise up. I keep the pressure nice and even, and I transition my weight from one side to the other. My feet also don't move. Yours might move a little bit, but my goal is to not move my feet. So if I start here, and I'm rotating, my feet don't really move in position from one side to the next. And right in the middle, I'm essentially in a box position. And here, right in the middle, I'm in a perfect box position. So that's what we're gonna be going for. So that's what's next on our plate. We're gonna go to the casual sit through flow for about one minute. You can go as fast or as slow as you would like. Um, there's no such thing as too slow. There is such thing as too fast. So I don't want to do things like this here, not a workout. I want to really feel through everything. So at this point, we'll start the minute. We'll go one minute, flowing on your own. Put some music on and go. You got one minute here to flow on your own. If you're watching from home, you can fast forward. I just turned my music on my end because I can't hear anything. But I can go back to Zoom. Yeah. Cool. All right. About 20 more seconds. Looking through a nice, strong flow, nice, strong positions on each side. Keep going. Almost done. Got about just under 10 seconds left. And relax. Come into the all fours position or the box position. So that would be, of course, that very middle transition point. So if you need to reset, the cue would be shoulder over wrist, hip over knees. Here. The knees might also be slightly just in front of the hip. That's also okay, too. Somewhere like this in this position, this will be our neutral box position. From here, my shoulders and my elbows are still active, so I'm going to be rotating my elbows forward as much as I can, thinking about screwing my hands into the ground. So if I'm based out, that hand is always going to be active and on. From here, I've got T-spine rotations. I'm going to take my hand behind my head, just for reference, give myself a 90 degree angle so I have my reference point for my elbow as how far I can travel. This is going to mimic the flexion, the mid-spine flexion and rotation that we had earlier. So I'm essentially going to take my hand behind my head. I'm going to rotate when move my elbow. I'm going to start to contract my core and rotate my core, rotate my T-spine inwards, touching my elbow. From here, I'm going to open up, and I'm going to start to screw my hand in. I'm going to start to push through my shoulder. I'm going to start to activate my opposite glutes and make sure that there's tension onto the ground so that I can rotate as much as possible, creating as much tension as possible towards the ceiling. Come back, release. I'm going to open up one more time. I'm going to hold at the top a couple of breaths. 
And as I exhale and release, I'm going to dive through and I'm going to reach my arm through and make another shoulder stretch. I'm going to let my head drop down to the ground. My base arm is going to push into the ground to try and stack my shoulders. I'm going to keep reaching my fingertips away from me as far as possible. And I'm going to start to look away now. Look away. Keep your head on the ground so that your cervical spine is relaxed. Keep breathing. And come out nice and easy. We're going to switch to the other side. So at this point, I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to screw my hand into the ground. Elbow fits going to be facing forward. My opposite hand is going to come behind my head. I'm going to lead with my elbow. I'm going to crunch the core. I'm going to flex my mid spine. Elbow goes to my elbow. And I'm going to drive into the ground. I'm going to rotate away my opposite glute. Again, it's turned on. I'm going to create tension through the ground so I can create a good base to rotate from. Take my elbow back down to the other elbow. Inhale. Big inhale. One more. Rotate out. Screw your arm into the ground. Hold for a couple of breaths. On your next exhale, thread the needle. Drive the arm through. Push your base arm into the ground. Just try to stack the shoulders and increase the stretch on your shoulders. Big back muscles. Reach with your fingertips away from you. And now look away from your hands. Keep your head on the ground. So your C-spines relax. Focus on just creating tension through your shoulders and your big upper back muscles. Breathe one more, two more breaths. And your next breath come out of it nice and easy. Are we trying Bring to keep on. our uh, hips squared? Um, for this, not necessarily. Um, I mean, my hips are going to move just a little bit, like my butt may move out of the way a little bit. But for the most part, my hips are immobilized. So I'm not too concerned about what they do. I'm really just more concerned about creating tension to the upper back. Okay. Um, yeah, like it, it, in this position, because my knees are on the ground, my hips really can't. They can't do much. So, however, my hips decide to move to make my shoulders work through the stretch, that's fine. Um, so, we're going to stay here on all fours, and we're going to essentially increase our sit through flow. So, before we let up some of this tension by allowing the other hand to come up and replace, now we're going to keep both hands on the ground. And this is just going to emphasize or highlight more rotation through, the, uh, through our T-spine. So if I was, um, if somebody's super tight, um, if you're really tight through your mid-spine, maybe it's because you're doing a lot of med ball stuff, um, you have some injuries to your back, uh, or any core injuries that where rotation is, is not really uh, something that's super comfortable over the long term, this can still definitely be a great mobilization. Things like where you can open up on your, um, on your own, uh, on your own range are good. Um, the, uh, the reason why I say an advanced sit through flow is because this requires a lot more flexion through the uh, for mobility through our mid, uh, our mid spine. So goal here is again to continue to drive the elbows forward and my hands are going to be straightened out. As I move, so if I leaned into my left hip at the moment, then my left arm is going to be more where most of my weight is. As I transition to the other side, that weight transfers to the opposite, uh, opposite side as well. But the entire time my arms are straight, even if I lose tension in my far side arm, I'm gonna keep my arms straight because as soon as I start to let my elbows bend, I also start to decrease this tension here and I lose the purpose of the exercise. So my arms are gonna be out straight and I'm just going to rotate through. Now as far as I can go without my hand coming up, that'll be your end range. So my goal is to just twist my spine as much as I can while keeping my arms straight. And you might find there's a tendency to, as you rotate, lean away. Um, and that feels um, that can feel really uncomfortable or pull um, low on the QL. Um, for this, because we're emphasizing in rotation, um, it's okay if my knees are a little bit closer to me here. Because again, I'm really trying to emphasize rotation through my mid spine, not necessarily shoulder lat 
uh, flexibility. So bring the knees in if it starts to get uncomfortable. Um, one minute, working through the and uh, working through the sides. So again, there's not really a there's a there is a too fast, um, but I wouldn't say there's necessarily too slow. So move through this range and really focus on planting your hands, spreading your whole hand out, spreading the muscles through your hands to get a good stretch through the forearms, driving the elbows forward. While at the same time, isolating this movement to really just my spine, my wrists, my shoulders. Everything else is really along for the ride. Yeah, three more seconds. This is something I do every morning, 30 seconds. And you can do this throughout the day, move as much as your body requires. This is something that's super easy to do. Get blood into my arms, blood into my legs, to my back in the morning. About 10 more seconds. All right, yep, keep the knees low. And cool. We feel a little warm here. So now, same opening up motion that we did before. So we're progressing the movement. So same concept of opening up our spine, but now we're gonna do it for my squat. So for this, you're gonna get into as deep of a squat as is comfortable for you. So maybe that is here. For some of you, it might be down here. For others, it might be half squat. That's okay. We can still get the rotation that we want from any, almost any squat position. So I'm gonna say for, for me, I'm gonna get into a deep squat. Again, for the purposes of today, it is okay if I can't get as low as I can in a class. I'm gonna try to increase my hip and ankle flexion and mobility. So instead of turning my feet out, which makes it harder to engage my glutes, instead of opting for this, this is great if I need the range of motion for working out. Not so great if I'm trying to improve my range of motion for anything. So I'm gonna keep my feet square, uh, feet just outside hip width apart. From here, I'm going to get into a squat. As I drop down, my knees start to drive out and I'll go as far as I can go while keeping my back flat. And that might be a little bit higher than I'm used to going with my feet in the position that they're in. From here, I'm gonna take one hand and grab my opposite ankle for bracing from the pull, the opposite ankle, and my knee is gonna drive out. So I have two opposing forces here for stability, which is good. So I get into the position here, and then I'm gonna open up, opposite way. Switch. I'm gonna pull and open. Go ahead and try that on your own. This will become part of uh, another movement flow that we do in just a little bit. So now, you were frozen. You were frozen for like the second half of that explanation. So okay, no worries. Um, so you're essentially getting into. Oh, I see. Um, you're essentially getting into as deep of a squat as you can go with your feet more or less neutral. And then you so grab the opposite. Yeah. So get into the squat first. And then one hand will grab the outside of my opposite ankle. So I'm gonna start to pull. And my, that's it. So your left knee starts to drive out, pull with your right hand. And then you'll open up with the left. So that pulling motion with your hand and the driving out of your knee creates to get good anchor for you. So you can really increase the rotation. And then you can come out of it easy and switch to the other side. But essentially my knee driving out with my pulling at the bottom of my ankle creates a good anchor to create opposite tension away. If I let that go, I lose the tension of reaching towards the sky. I become a little jello. Um, and again, I lose that benefit. So that's really there for stability. For those that might be watching and can't go super low, that's also okay. Um, even if I can't grab the other side of my ankle, I don't need to really if I'm not that low. So if I'm a little bit higher, on my squat, I can put my hand to the inside and I can push 
my leg out while I keep my knee pushed in. So again, creating some resistance here, creates some tension and gives me a nice solid base to rotate away from. So this is also an option. All I'm really trying to do, whether I am opposing my knee or whether I'm pulling across my leg is really just creating a tension anchor point that I can use to rotate against. That's really it. Um, so it doesn't matter how deep you can go specifically for this. Or if again, focusing on rotation. Okay, cool. Okay. How are you doing, Tizana? I'm good. Cool. I was just doing what you're you're good. <laughs> you are you are so good. It is all good. Um again. All purpose of the class is just to move. Um, stretching and rolling takes time. You can spend an hour on your own. Everybody can spend an hour on our own. I'm doing it. Um, I don't think we need a class for it. It's just good to be able to move without a burpee or a kettlebell sometimes. Um, so one of my favorite things, of course, is hips, specifically because I lack hip mobility, so I work on it all the time but it's also some of the most functional stuff um, that allows you to get into a lot of weird positions, fighting, running, jumping, um, all that stuff. So I focus a lot on it. We're gonna do it again every class. Um, the 90 transitions, we're gonna move through these pretty quickly um, so, we can so we can add to our transitions. So again, quick points on transitioning from your shin box. It doesn't have to be perfect 90-90. It's really whatever is comfortable for you. Um, as I drive my leg out, I'm going to try to open up as much as I can without just flopping over. So it'd be really easy for me to just kind of go from one side to the next, but I lose essentially the, ability, the opportunity to activate um, my external rotation of my hip. So whatever side you start on, your trailing leg is going to be the one that opens up the first. I'm going to really open up as far as I can go. And then when I can't go any further, then my leg will follow. And then as I transition in, my legs for a split second are really being pulled apart. My, I'm opposing uh, my knees in opposite directions. And then I finally go to the other side. And whatever makes, it, whatever makes it easy for you to stay upright, you should use. So it's okay to do this with your hands. You by all means do not have to do it without your hands. Um, hands are always okay for support. Again, we're focusing on hips, not anything else at the moment. So make your transitions, 30 seconds here on your own, and then we'll add to this here. So this is really just getting us primed for more hip mobility. And you might feel some tension right at the end. When you're lifting up the leg, you might feel some tension right through where your hips and your core meet, your hip flexors, and that's totally normal. If something's painful, sharp pain, don't do it. We're just trying to create some tension, get some blood flow through the hip flexors. Now we're going to transition to a, um, using our squat. So we've been doing this the last couple of classes. So as I transition with my hips, as I open up and I reach my end range, this now becomes a squat. So I take my hand and I'm gonna push myself up into that squat position. So now my transition goes from here, and now as I reach my end, I'm gonna push into this arm and push myself into a squat position just for a split second, and then I'm going to, with control, put myself back down. You can use both hands as well, and if you need to stabilize in the front, that is also okay, totally okay. This is really just getting our body able to move from the ground up, getting to our feet in a different way. Um, functional get-ups, of course, would include getting our knees back or rocking forward, just another way. So opening the hips, pushing up, coming back down. And again, as you transition, by all means, it is okay to use your hands to brace yourself. 30 more seconds here, and then we're gonna keep going. We're gonna add to this again, I should say. 15 more seconds. So that's transition from the squat. Here. 
Got five more seconds. And then from here, we're gonna to add to that. So as we transition from our 90-90 to our squat, we're also going to work our open. So get back a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna push. Now, if I'm opening up, I think to you, this is to my left. So if I open up with my left knee and I push up into my squat, I'm also going to grab the left side and open up to the left, or to the right, I should say, opposite arm. Sit back down, and then I repeat. It doesn't really matter which way you go, it's just a little bit easier, so if I'm pushing up to my right, my right arm's gonna reach, I'm gonna open up with the opposite. I'll sit myself back down, again, open back up, 90-90 squat transition, reach across, open up, nice and controlled, all the way down. For a scaled option, here, here. You're going about 45 seconds. So for those that are doing the scale transition, coming up to as deep of a squat as you can, rotating out using whatever support you need to get yourself back into 90-90. Take a good upright position and then repeat the other way. Open the hips, sit yourself up, open, use whatever support structure you need to lower yourself down safely and then rinse and repeat. 15 more seconds. And then, we get to move into our shoulders. And we're almost done. Oh wait, we're off at 8:30. Okay, two five more minutes. It is 8:30, right? Yeah, 7:45. Cool. All right, so five more minutes. Um, so let's stay with the hips. Um, let's work a deep lunge from here. So we're gonna skip one thing. So. Off of our, um, off of uh, the box position, I'm going to use our box position as our, um, as our reference point. So, box position, shoulders over wrists, hips just above or just slightly behind the knees. So here, maybe here. This will be my position. So from my box position, I'm going to go into a hip flexor deep lunge. So for that, it just really means I'm going to do something like this the one where we send our hip all the way back. The only reason why people would do a deep hip flexor stretch is because their hip flexors are um, not tight enough to where things like this are effective. Essentially what I'm doing, the hip flexor runs from here, essentially through this way. So what I'm doing when I do a deep lunge is really just trying to straighten it out, stretch it out as much as I can. And for whatever reason, I can't get deeper unless I give myself some elevation and give my hip flexor some more room to move. This may not be you. Um, this might be too tight, and in that case, the hip flexor stretch is always the stretch that works best for you. So it might be this one, where I'm just 90-90, my hip is over my knee, my knee over my ankle. From here, my glute for my trailing leg or my, my, my downward leg is turned on. So this stabilizes my lower lumbar spine. I'm gonna drive my hips forward, and then from here, I'm gonna reach over to add a little bit extra stretch if I need it. But again, glute stays on, stabilize the low spine so that I don't do things like this, which hurts and compresses my low spine and takes away from my hip flexor. So butt turns on, drive the hip forward. If I need extra rotation, I can take that same side arm, put it over my head and then rotate away and that creates more tension through the hip flexor. But that's really my goal. So hip flexor stretch, holding that for about 30 seconds. Glute turns on, I'm gonna start my clock Five seconds ago, so we have 25 seconds left. I'm gonna hold it here. Keep breathing. Breathe. With my glute turned on, by the way, I'm taking my pelvis into a posterior tilt, which means that if my pelvis is holding water, 
I'm tilting it actually backwards, which is actually better for me when I'm standing up. Um, what causes the five, four, three, two, one. What causes, you can relax. What causes that low back pain when we stand up straight is that really I'm doing this. So my hips are forward and there's a nice curve right here. So my pelvis is tilted the other way. So for me to tuck my tailbone beneath me, it actually lengthens up my hip flexors. So shortened hip flexors cause that pain from sitting all day and stuff. So by actually just tucking my tailbone in, I can still keep my rib cage down. I can still keep my shoulders back. I can still stand nice and proud. But now my spine is not actually being compressed in down here at the bottom. So with that in mind, I'm turning the glutes on. We just, we're going to switch to the other side, by the way. So let's go to the other side. 30 seconds on the other hip flexor. That 90-90 stretch. Or you can go into that deeper lunge, uh, that deeper lunge stretch if you feel the need. So you can get a hip flexor stretch, holding 30 seconds. If you haven't already done so, do that now. I'm going to start the clock. Go ahead. If you've already done that, work something else. Or fast forward 30 seconds until the next, uh, until the last couple of exercises here. Got about 15 more seconds left. And then we're going to work some scorpion rotation and end with some floating transitions. None of the class today. And time. Cool. Okay, so from here, going back to our box position, shoulders over wrists, knees just below or just in front of hips. Now from here, I'm going to take one leg, and I'm going to put that leg or that knee center line with my body. And this gives me some good support. So whatever leg you start with, that's okay. That's the leg we start with. So for me, I'm going to start with my right leg in the middle, which means my left leg, I'm going to reach behind me. And at this point, I'm only using the extension of my glute. So when I send my leg back, I'm going to use my chair as a brace. When I send my leg backwards, I'm only going as far as my mid spine will allow me. Now, I'm not trying to flex with my low back. I'm not trying to go into a yoga back then. I don't want to compress my low spine that way. So I'm going to find my top range or my um, top range here where I can go no further without doing the arch in the back. So keeping my rib cage down or brace for that punch. I'm going to take my knee, I'm going to drive up using my glute, go to the end range, and then from there, rotate the knee out and open up. Notice my base hands, they're not bent, still staying strong. Bring the knee back over, knee faces the ground, bring the knee in, touch the wrist, go back up. Back up to the top. As soon as you reach your end range, rotate at the hip. Take your foot behind you further. Keep your arms pressing to the ground. Drive that knee up to the sky. Drive the heel towards the ground. Reverse. Bring it back one more time. Knee comes back towards the wrist. Drives back up behind you. As soon as you reach your end range, rotate at the hip. Take the foot further behind you. Your Glute is still turned on, still pushing through the ground. And release, bring it back, back to rest position, all fours. We got three reps on the other side. Now as I go to my reps, we're gonna reset. I'm gonna take my opposite leg, I'm gonna put it center line on my body for support. My opposite leg is now gonna do the work. I'm gonna bring my knee to my wrist. I'm gonna reach my end range. I'm gonna rotate at the hip. I'm gonna bring my leg further behind me. I'm gonna keep pressing into the ground here. Elbows are going to be screwed in. As I release, I bring it back to my wrist. Going for rep number two. Reach up, rotate the hip, drive it back, screw the elbows in, screw the hands into the ground. That glute should be turned on. I'm gonna bring it back, release, rotate the hip, bring the knee back in. One more rep, knee touches the wrist. Drive the knee back and up. Reach the end range, rotate at the hip. Take the leg behind you. And coming back. Nice, relax. Last thing we'll end with is gonna be some shoulders. We spent a lot of time today. I'm specifically 
on the ground supporting ourselves with sit-through positions and through all the other various movements we've been doing, doing a lot of things with our shoulders. So I'm going to take my hands out. I'm going to actually start my box position again. So knees, hands, and all under squared position. I'm going to walk my hands out in front of me. I'm going to keep walking my hands out in front of me. And as my butt starts to sink towards my heels, I'm going to start to spread my knees apart and let myself get a little bit lower to where essentially my chest should almost be on the ground. So if I start in my box position, as I walk my hands out, my feet stay where they're at, my knees spread apart, and I sit my butt back. I'm going to bring my head through my shoulder window, so my ears and my shoulders are essentially together. My hands are going to be palm towards the ground. My toes are tucked underneath. And then from here, let your head rest on the ground. Straighten out the arms. Press the palms into the ground. Sink your butt away from your hips towards your heels. Feel the stretch through your lats. Keep your head rested on the ground and without using your neck muscles. Push into your palms to lift your head up off the ground. Your neck should be completely relaxed. So all of this stretch comes from the upper lats and shoulders. Relax one more time and we're done. Sink a little bit further back. Press the palms of your, uh, the heel of your palms further into the ground. Your whole palm goes into the ground. Push into the ground and lift your head up off the ground. Keep your neck completely relaxed. Put all of this mobilization on your shoulders. Breathe. Breathe here. Breathe into this. Keep the head elevated. The shoulders will relax a little bit. You'll feel the ability to sink a little bit deeper, further away. Hold for a few more seconds. Three, two, one, and relax. Head goes to the ground. Let your arms come back in underneath you and then come up nice and easy. And that'll be it for today. Thanks for thanks for coming to Nana. Good to see you. Let's see. And I'll see you guys later. This will be recorded. Thanks for watching the recording. And yeah, you guys have a good night. See you later. Okay.